Knock Off Nation back on deck for a Friday edition, episode 41 of the Knock Off podcast. Danny, 41. Chris. Cheers, boys. Knock Off. Yeah. Knock Off regulars on deck. A little fivesome this evening. Uh, joining us today, first timers to the Knock Off. Got our homie Eli and uh, Brad Trainer. Welcome, boys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Bit of background on, uh, on these two lads. We've just sort of connected through through uh, Jim, through Danny, is that right? Met these lads? Yeah, yeah. Eli and I actually trained at the, uh, at the same gym down the road. So just uh, got chatting about the podcast one day and um, heard about Brad's work. So uh, Brad uh, likes to wet his beak in a bit of everything. He's got a uh, pretty uh, distinct career in uh, boxing, many, many a kickboxing fight and starting to turn things to gridiron. But fighting first and foremost to you, was it, is it something you've always been interested in? Um, no, not, not really. Um, it kind of just happened. Um, 21, I wanted to get fitter. Um, you know, sick of where my life was going kind of thing. And, uh, there was a gym just down the road and, uh, signed up one day and, and never looked back. And, and next thing I know, you know, I'm fighting seven years later. And, and, and what was your first discipline? Like, we, we were talking a little bit off the air before about sort of the, the different disciplines of martial arts that you've partaken in. And, you know, you've competed in boxing and Muay Thai and, yeah. um, you know, kickboxing and, you know, K1 and all that sort of stuff. Like, um, is, is that where you started out? Like, wh- where, where did it all begin for you? For me, it all began with uh, Muay Thai in, um, in a little town in South Coast, New South Wales. Um, but boxing for me, I've not, uh, like I've, you know, dipped my toe in it. I honestly couldn't even tell you how many fights I've had, uh, boxing. It was uh, a ridiculous amount you were oh, saying no, no, before. No, 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 like Muay Thai, Muay Thai. Uh, how many uh, fights total have you had, dude? Total have I had, fuck, like over 70. Yeah. That's over incredible. 70. Yeah. And, and you've had, you've had a whole bunch of fights in Thailand too, yeah, haven't I've you? Had, yeah, had, had a good crack there. I was lucky enough to fight in Dubai this year. Wow. That's probably my like the the biggest step for me that was huge um so um, was this like uh was this something for you as a kid growing up did you get in lots of scraps and shit like that were you that sort of kid growing up no no, so you like uh what what, little kid so was it like was it that was it you know uh, self-defense choice that you wanted to go sign up for a gym or you just thought it'd be something to do get fit i just wanted to get fit yeah you know i wanted to get fit and um and obviously like learn how to fight you know i never had any intention to fight um, you know, I never wanted to be a fighter. Mm. 70 fights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then, like, I guess at some stage you just want to test those skills that you've developed, you know, a- against somebody else's skills, I guess. Is that why you make that switch from, you know, something that you're just training in to, you know, let's test this against was, somebody? Yeah, it was more so, um, you know, people at the gym uh, that I first started at saying, you know, oh, I'll have a fight and, I, and then me going, oh, shit, I'm, I'm going to have a fight. You know, I want to fight now. I really want to fight. And, and then my trainer then, you know, finally let me have a fight. I think it was like maybe eight months after I first started training. Right. And it's, it's, a, it's a grim subject to start out on, man. But was, was that Aaron Smith out of curiosity? No, no, no. Um, yeah, so... Uh, when I when I moved up to corporate box, um, then I started training with Aaron. Yeah, yeah man, yeah. I, I um, personally know Aaron because I used to do personal training with him probably about oh when I was sort of twenty three. So we're talking probably about nine or ten years ago now. And and for anybody that that doesn't know that story, Aaron Smith is you know one of the premier Muay Thai trainers in Australia or or was. And just all of a sudden, you know, like passed away and he trained some absolute killers and he was just a super, super incredible personality, you know, like just had a a positivity and a zest for life. Like no one you would ever, you know, no one you would ever encounter just was hilarious and just, you know, like really, really comical in his approach to things and dressed, you know, like (laughs) super sharp, man, super sharp. So, but... um. But so he, he trained you for, for how many? Because um, he was a staple yeah, at corporate for, box, man. I think I'd, by the time I'd gotten to corporate box, I'd had um, maybe 20, fuck, I can't remember, like maybe 25 fights wow. by the time I got to corporate box. Um, and then I'd had a few with Preacher. You would have heard of Preacher. Yeah, 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 yeah Bruce. Um, and then one day as it came up to me and he was just like, you know, I'll always be here. I'll be your trainer. He's like, let's do it. And then I think it was four years. Yeah, every day. We worked together. Nice, nice. So 
Um, and he's a machine himself, man. Aaron could weapon. throw, man. Aaron, Aaron could absolutely throw. Like, not because I know any bit about it whatsoever, but just watching that guy kick pads and shit like that in, uh, in Fitness First, it would, it would make a noise that would make the gym stop and watch, you yep. know? Like, I mean, it is it, a big gym like Fitness First Lutwich where, you know, bros are in there fucking throwing dumbbells <laughs> Bunch around. Bunch of chicks and, doing donkey yeah. kicks and shit. And you got, and you <laughs> got just throwing Yeah, heat. and you got Aaron <laughs> kicking pads and it's just like, Fucking dynamite going oh, off in the there. Guy you know? loved attention, hey. Yeah, oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the only reason you work the heavy bag in like a in like a fitness club type oh, gym. Yeah, he, could, <laughs> he could work it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh fuck. Yeah, that's a, a that's an absolute shame. But um, your time in Thailand did you did you live over there during um, that or you yeah, you stayed, sort of just visited stayed there for a while? Yeah. yeah. Um, was there for a, for a little while. What was that like, man? Um, it was different. It's was, it was a lot different than being here in Australia. Yeah, culture culture so, shock. So young, and um, and Do yeah, you, you know, like you know, it, it's just it, it's it's good when it's good. It's bad when it's bad. You know what I mean? Like right. it's it's good in the sense if you go over there for so you know my first stint over there was like five weeks. Um, and that was sick, you know. Five weeks, no responsibility. Shit, yeah. Five Fuck weeks up, in Thailand, train I wouldn't like that. And you, you literally, you train. You don't cook your own food. You don't do your own washing. You just get up every morning. You go train. You go back home, or you go out to the beach, or and and then you come back to training again. Living like a professional yeah. athlete, yeah. Mm. Literally the best thing in, in life. But then, <laughs> <laughs> if, if you move over there, then shit can go south. Mm. You can get injuries, and then like, um, if you don't have much savings like I didn't, you know, then you got to start fighting to make money. Right, know, right. And, stuff like that. Yeah. and it's not much money over there. So, you know, like, um, you know, when, when it's good, it's good over there. Yeah. Right. But, but when it gets bad, it gets bad. And but it's character building. And it's good. That's what's incredible is is that there there isn't like an enormous amount of money in Muay Thai, you know, no. that, that it's never sort of... Fuck all. Yeah, it's it's never sort of even though it's it's such a dynamic and explosive combat sport that you know is exciting as fuck to watch. Yep. You know, like it's never sort of caught on with marketing and promotion. Mm. What what do you think that is? It's hard just because everyone loves boxing. I don't get why, man. I fight boxing. It's boring as fuck. Literally, you mm. are allowed to punch. That's it. Mm, like yeah. how fun yeah. does that sound to you guys? Mm. Not very fun mm. at all. Um, <laughs> Like, honestly, like, and that's the only reason why I'd ever consider going into boxing is mm. for the money. Mm. But, you know, Muay Thai, it, it's, you're right, it's so explosive, it's so exciting, it's, you know, like, at any moment, like, you get caught with an elbow, the fight's over. Oh. Mm. And were, it's pretty, like, uh, it seems like it's kind of a bit helter-skelter, like, in the UFC and stuff, there's, you know, fighters will have medical suspensions and shit like that, but you were just saying you've had two fights this month? Oh, yeah, like, um... Yeah, that, that happens. Um, boxing's like that. I remember I fought boxing in Melbourne and, and the ref was a bit of a knob and stopped the fight early. And he was like, oh, you know, you're fighting again? I was like, yeah, next week. Um, <laughs> I'll be in Queensland. He's like, oh, shit, all right, fair enough, you know. Um, so I do you have a, do you have like band. a manager or something or had like just no. through your gym? You yeah, just shaggy. Yeah. 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 Oh, cheers, shags. <laughs> Shaggy. <laughs> Yeah, the, the owner of corporate box, he literally, he's like, he's like a dad. A so, so a forgive my ignorance, but explain to me exactly what corporate box is because I, I've driven past it so many times and it's like, it, it's located in this area that it's really like surreptitious. The building's all blacked out yep. and shit like that. And there's it's next to an R&T. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just quietly. There's Alleg- 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 allegedly. There's allegedly R- there's, R&T there's, on a, that there's a yeah. rubber tuck there. <laughs> oh, oh, is there? Yeah. Is there? <laughs> where, where are we talking? Oh, yeah. Wait, bad tell me. To one of your sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so yeah, corporate box from the front doesn't look like anything. The, the entrance is actually around the back. Um, it's, right. it's it's, it's all, there's five corporate boxes now. Um, oh, okay, so it's yeah. a chain. It just in in southeast Queensland, or yeah, there's one in like Everton Park. Yeah. There's one in Ipswich. There's one in the Valley. There's one in. Somewhere else and does does Shaggy own all of those? Yeah, really far yeah. out, man. I can remember when he started with that supplement shop. Yeah, you know, like is that that is that still there? Does he still no, do that? No, no, no it's not. It's gone. Corporate box but now. yeah, started yeah. with that supplement shop, and then um, and then I opened up Corporate Box, and it mm. has been explosively popular. You know, it's it's been good. Like Corporate Box is it's cool because um, 
Well, the one that I'm at. So it's like. so it, so the, the high level fucking you know thesis of what uh, corporate box is. It's like a promotion company, like Ace Boxing no, promotions no, on the no, weekend, no, 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 or it's, 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 it's a, a gym. it's a fighter's, it's a gym. It's so a fighter's it's gym. It's like you know black zillions. Black zillions or, yeah. Or, yeah. Well, yeah. Hold it's on, a fighter's hold on. gym, but it's open to the it's open to the public. So yeah, the public yeah. the public can go there and get memberships. It's a regular gym, and it's a uh, multidisciplinary martial arts gym, or oh, just kickboxing, just, or well, now now when I first started, it was pretty much just Muay Thai and boxing. Um, there's a lot more structure now. There's like boxing classes and stuff like that. Um, so um, predominantly, you know, like I don't really see another side of it. I'm only there to train my clients and also like uh, train myself. So when I first rocked up there, it was to me, it was just a fight gym. But it was weird because, you you know, I'm coming from this little country town. I rock up, there's like weights and stuff everywhere I'm like, what the fuck you know there's just a ring in the middle of like an actual gym with people, yeah. you know doing their shit and i'm like oh, okay you know kicking pads in front of them and uh, you know like it's it's good because um you know you, you can separate yourself like i myself i now have a little team uh, at corporate box you know um and and we train outside so you know it's 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 a gym where you have professional fighters, you have mm. amateur fighters, you have like your everyday person coming yeah. in there to just use the gym. Yeah. You have uh, everyone just mixes. Like it's literally a gym for everyone, if that makes sense. That's you know? a great way to describe it, man. That yeah, is a no, really no good So have you you trained in there, Chris? Uh, I've been in there. I've I haven't there. haven't trained in there before, but I went in there it's and creeping. it was and it was early days. Like it was yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Sit standing in the fucking guys' toilets and <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it looked familiar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, that was you, man, behind the lockers there. Yeah. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> but, oh, yeah, geez, you were hitting those pads hard mate, out there. F- <laughs> funny, funny story. Not, not to, not to backtrack to our subject before, but there was this gay guy who used to be at, um, used to be at um, oh, fit, this fitness first lot, which way back in the day. And um, and Aaron man wanted to bash him because because he used to hang out in the dunnies and um, when Aaron was getting changed and Aaron was just like this is fucked up man like I'm gonna fucking I don't care if he is and because oh, I won't like too Gaza. much that yeah exactly like Gaza. this guy was deaf too so he was oh, like oh you know like I, you know he goes right. I, I, I won't care about hit, like hitting a deaf guy <laughs> like you know oh, oh, shocking shocking but uh, you've, me about you've got the uh, gay gym story yeah. yeah. <laughs> Turned, it, turned oh, out, yeah. Story, turned man. out, um, yeah. I, I signed up to a gym exclusively for gay guys <laughs> without even knowing it. Yeah, that's, Oi, that's what I tell everyone. Anyway. Without even, yeah, 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 yeah precisely. Yeah, yeah. Like, I only found out that it was uh, basically a bathhouse because was, there was one, <laughs> there was one shower there that had um, that had a shower curtain. That was it, and all the other was just full on just open showers. What is it like at Go? Has everyone got their own individual shit, or is it like a locker room sort of spec? Uh, no, it's like a same yeah. as the toilet cubicle, you know? Yeah, you go yeah, and yeah. Like, this one here is <laughs> not group like, shower. No, no, yeah, no shower. Guys just smacking any. each other on no, the no, ass no, and no, shit. Footy yeah. full, 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 full shower and yeah, shit. Like. That's it. Because I'd go to um, like I'd, I'd go to the gym in the morning, and then I, I would use the um, I would use the shower with the shower curtain. Because I'm like, I don't know if you boys have ever worked out or done a hard cardio session. It doesn't do a whole lot for your horse. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm there, I'm like, fuck, I'll, I'll use the one with the curtain. And there was a sauna in there as well, you know, like in the same sort of big, big room with like these two hot and cold tubs. And the second I'd get in the shower, a dude would come and just come out of the sauna and just start showering next to me. And that happened like on multiple times. I'm like, what's going on in, here? In the buff or wearing like... Oh, uh, yeah, you just walk out nude out of the oh. thing. So like, Next to you and there's oh. like eight yeah, free yeah, spaces. Like eight free showers. <laughs> yeah. He just like starts sort of like soaping himself up in the next one. I'm like, did he help hang did on he wash yourself? Like, did yeah. he come and help you? Yeah, yeah he, did, he was real gentle. <laughs> <laughs> And then didn't didn't wasn't it like you used to have so, uh, the uh, sign up? There was, like, yeah, I'd done. Uh, another time I'd gone there like to have a um, like did a quick session after Curtains. work before going out to did <laughs> fucking <laughs> <good>. <laughs> you know, going out for um, <laughs> for dinner. So I did a quick session. Going to the bathroom on the Friday afternoon, there would have been fifteen dudes in there, not a single person in the weight room, <laughs> and no classes had finished or anything. It's just, just a bunch all of dudes in the around, rooms. looking to make some bad decisions. <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you like, oh, can you stop writing down the address to this place? Like? <laughs> I got, I got two questions. So you, you knew the first time, but then you went back again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Had a membership, oh, so yeah, there was direct just, debit. Oh, I, was, I was, I was doing seven a week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Best shape it ever yeah. been. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, 
just no. peacocking on the heavy bag. And there was like <laughs> every session. Ended up being um, st- straw that broke the camel's back. There was, there was a sign in there. It's like any uh, lewd or sexual behaviour was result in mm. uh, like rip, ripping yeah. up the membership. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, nah, this is uh, is that what you left for? for? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ended up being a, a life ban. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's funny. Funny encounters like that when you are a, a heterosexual male and you and you get those real queer experiences. Yeah, like I've told the sure. story on the podcast before, and we ain't hating on you know on anybody, but like um, no episode forty uh, v- hashtag vote yes. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we went into back. Absolutely, we, went into we, we ain't hate, we ain't hating on anyone, absolutely. but it's almost just. Comical sometimes it when it's like, oh, that's, oh that's man, what it is. yeah, that's exactly well, what it is. Yeah. Chris and I had some experiences growing up in uh, South Parisian, and um, little did we know, my parents bought an apartment there, and it's actually considered, you know, like a somewhat of a mecca for homosexuals, like in Southeast Queensland, I suppose. It explains it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and yeah. then there's the answer. And, uh, and, they, and ad- I, they advertise it. That I way would have been too, all of about was it thirteen. Foot, yeah. I would have been about. 13 or 14 the first time I saw a like a fully grown man giving another fully grown man a blowjob like in the oh, sand dunes. Oh, <laughs> what were you saw when he said that you watched every straight man in the room cringe like <laughs> that's too young to and, see uh, that. and you I liked have... it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I never looked back yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, um, no. yeah. hashtag vote yes uh, yeah. can you still get that imagery in your head like is it sort of burnt in I can't remember like shaft in mouth <laughs> but uh, I can remember like the situation was basically me and my buddy were like Chasing each other through this little goat Dude, track boy. in the dunes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whipping each other with towels, <laughs> and uh, came to this like uh, Jim? came to this little clearing, and there was like there was just like a, a towel, and then like one dude like spread legged, and the other dude Ooh. with his head in his legs, oh, but man. nowhere to go, and I'm already sprinting, and so just I basically them. just hurdled these two <laughs> gay dudes, like, and then my buddy was chasing me, and I've gone into this like next little goat track, and I hear him like. Oh fuck! <laughs> like, <laughs> and jump it, and we both like legged it out, and like ended up um, cutting my dudes. leg up really badly, like on this fence, like because I was so freaked out, like trying to get out of there and shit. It was just like the yeah. Imagine I don't know, imagine getting your traumatizing, rat, <laughs> getting getting your rat smoked, and then all of a sudden like two kids are hurling. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you fucking asking for trouble if you're on a public beach in the yeah. sand oh, for fuck's sake. I can remember a couple of times at Southport, like running <laughs> through Southport, that bit. Southport's the another one, yeah. Big, big, big hanging out. But um, yeah, w- running to the beach with my surfboard for a surf and similar sort of deal, you know, like just except didn't hurdle them, but off to the left, you know, Join like two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this looks like a surf sucks anyway. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's flat. Fuck it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway. So did did you did you we, we you're lucky enough to go to like a um, a King's Cup while uh, you were uh, over in Thailand no, by no, chance? No, 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 none of that stuff. I, I wasn't as into – like I didn't really get into Muay Thai, even though I was over there for fuck, like nine months. Oh, yeah. nice. Um, I didn't get into it as much until, you know, I got back here to Australia, you know, um, and, and stuff like that. So, you know, I missed out on all the important things over there. But that's all right. Like, you know, when I go back over there, I'll do mm, it again. Mm. And, and you got plans to go back? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, except, you know, my fight style is changing now. So I think I'd be better off going to Holland or something like that. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And and training over there and oh, move closer. Uh, training over there and fighting, you know, because I'm, I'm more of an aggressive fighter yeah. as opposed to a relaxed fighter. I just feel like I'm a little bit torn. I want to go to Thailand, oh. but I don't, I don't want to go there to train. I'd rather just go there, have a few fights, chill out. And then if I wanted to train, you know, have like a solid couple of months in yeah. Holland. Yeah, Alistair so that, so that sort of push, that push forward aggressive style, is that sort of Dutch? Yeah. Sort of, right, yeah. that's cool. What's, yeah. the, what's the name for Dutch kickboxing? It's got like a, a particular name. The, the, okay. What's the camp that fucking oh. Alistair Overeem's from? Oh. Like, isn't camp. he the Black Zillions now? Yeah. Or his coach yeah. or something like that. And uh, his coach Hoost is Henry, Henry Hooft. Yeah, Ernesto, who's that? Was his old one back in the day, like in Holland? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. well, isn't well, it like somewhere around there? Jose Aldo's coach like uh, came up with a certain style of 
of kick of like Muay Thai kickboxing. Uh, Andre Pananeris. Yeah. Ooh, no gee, idea. I don't know. Yeah, no, yeah. Fact, yeah. But no. but yeah, <laughs> the, the, there is a, a distinct, almost like stylistically difference between Dutch kickboxing and and sort of Muay Thai. Yeah. Well, they don't really. I mean, most of them use like K one, and you know, K one that's no elbows. Um, you know what I mean? And which is a bit more fast paced. Mm. No, no clinch. Fast pace, aggressive fight stop. Mm. No elbows. Yeah. Who are. Um, sorry, you go, Briss. Yeah. Who are. Um, when you sort of first get into it, do you. We've asked this question to some of the. Uh, we had Ben Wynn, UFC fighter, on, yeah. um, on this podcast before. And we asked, all because you compete in the sport, do you watch it as well? Do you. Where Ben, he said, you know, if. If I'm at a venue doing an appearance and the UFC's on, yeah, I will watch it. But other than that, no, it's just my job. I like martial arts. I don't necessarily go home and watch it. Do you find yourself enjoyed as a spectator sport for oh, you? Look, I, I, I'm kind of in two minds there. Um, you know, like a fight and train so much. Fucking last thing I want to do is go to a show and watch mm. one. Mm. Like literally, I would much rather be in bed sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> but um, at the same time, I've got fighters which I look up to um, – and admire myself so i always try to go watch them or you know at least uh watch them on on youtube or pay for the live stream and watch them um but like much in the same mind with ben you know um, unless i have to you know for the reasons i've given Mm. before (coughs) i wouldn't really go out of my way to you know watch it What's your uh, what's your go to sport? Do you watch any sports? Are you are you a fan of anything else or? Um, no, nah, not really. Like uh, d- I've been watching heaps of gridiron lately. Uh, um, yeah, because yeah, you were like telling us before the potty yeah. that you started playing in a in an Australian league of NFL. Is that right? Yeah, just stuck in Queensland though. <laughs> okay, okay. And yeah. what's that? What's that like, man? Have you like? Do you know much about the game? So have you watched that before or? Well, look honestly, like after after as a past, I, I went through a rough stage. I didn't know if I wanted to fight again. Right, and um, and one day I was just chilling with uh, Bales and I's mate, um, Eli, and we watched Blue Mountain State. It's all about yeah, yeah right. all about footy. Yeah. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do this. And then next thing you know, I signed up for a team and and started playing. And um, and what what position do you play? Me, I w- I play uh, defensive end. Defensive end. Yeah, no, I don't know anything about it. But what is that on the atta- attacking or <laughs> no, defending no. side? That, uh, defensive end. Sort of give that away. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry, man. I don't know these things. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, and, um, and and so is that there like a lot of like what what's the allure of it as such? So much to learn, bro. Yeah, like, you know, like. Um, you know, I was so naive at first when I started. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to the NFL. And then you realise these kids, that, like, that are in the NFL, they're, like, 23. They've been playing <laughs> since they could walk. All they've known is this. And you've got to remember, man, like, they've trained their whole life for one position in mm. the whole game. Mm. You know, like, and, and that's got its own set of rules. It's, like, what you've got to follow. Like, everyone just thinks it's just tackling people. No, it's yeah. not. Like, there's so Fuck. much. We, we, you were throwing some stats. Whoa, shit. Okay. You were throwing some stats on a recent episode about um, just the amount of talent that they have to choose mm. from. Oh. And it's fucking staggering, it's, man. Yeah, like, the amount of, like, you know, high school teams that go into college teams that then go into, like, you know, all of yep. these different levels of representative where they're just fucking, like, mowing out, like, you know, heaps and heaps of people. And then you get a Jared Hayne or somebody like that that goes in and, like, has a crack and, and is considered our, you know, most elite fucking football player or game game with the ball in your hand yeah. sort of thing and doesn't even make the final 80 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. He, he made it through. So he, he got a spot on the 53-man roster to compete in the season, but his appearances were limited in that and he dropped the ball. Like he, was, he played special teams where like, you can come in at kick returner and yeah. uh, drop the ball twice, man. There's just when it's that one percent of talent, it's like. Do you remember those stats? Like it was around that Trophy Kids doco. Did you boys see that on Netflix at all? Trophy Kids, fuck. We've, no. we've talked about it a couple of times on the potty, but like people's, um, like these American parents who just fucking crazy about their kids achieving in sport and shit to the to basically like. Where you f- the point where you feel like you're watching like child abuse pretty much yeah. like the, parent, the parents living their um their dreams of their kids exactly and openly time. admitting it too like saying you know fucking I just want him to do what you know I should have done and all this <laughs> yeah. sort of shit and it's just like fucking hell dude it's let brutal it go. Yeah. what sort of uh who's coaching out here in Gridiron for your team is it people with 
Um, I just experience in the game, or see, I, I don't know too much about my coaches. Um, like my defensive coach, um, from what I'm aware of, he used to play for our team. Now, um, awesome bloke, puts his heart and soul into it. Um, I honestly didn't know anything about the sport <laughs> until like you know I started playing not that long ago. April, I think it was. And like is that I like most training. of the cats that that come down there and play? Like, or um, are they sort of fans on TV and then sort of want to have a, a, a bit yeah, of a run? I'm, I'm sure there's a few like me. Um, bit of both. But yeah. yeah, the majority that I've seen have like known about it for a while and stuff like that. I don't know anything. Mm. Mm. Did you have to purchase all the gear? Yeah. No, <laughs> <Nice. laughs> that's awesome. Mm. Um, oh well. The club gave me like the the pads and the lid and stuff like that, but like everything else, yeah, you had to buy and stuff. Mad, but it's drop, cool, drop. cool kit, bud. Yeah, it's we're sick. Gonna, we <laughs> drop your um your team's name, bro. Oh yeah, the Brisbane Rhinos. Brisbane Rhinos, Rhinos. 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 Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And and how many how many teams are there in the, in the comp? I think. It's like twelve or no, thirteen. Nice. That's a like that. that's a lot, man. I that's a lot. I could be wrong. I'm yeah, probably yeah. Be shit and how many are on a te- <laughs> how many are on a team? <laughs> um, so y- normally it's like sixty players per team because you got the special. <sighs> so you you know you you got your first string uh, for offense, defensive, and then you got your special teams, and then like you know you got your backups and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, with with ours, I think we've got like fifty something players. I think. Wow. Um, yeah, which is pretty that's good. A, that's mm. a lot of people playing gridiron, man. Yeah, yeah. shit, yeah. For like Southeast 11, Queensland, eleven per side on at once. Yeah. You know have you yeah. have you ever had a run? No, I mean, it's not my thing. To be not your thing? Kill it. But how do you Absolutely know if you haven't it. had a run? <laughs> oh, exactly, Bales. <laughs> I like the free-flowing sort of yeah. games more so myself, but yeah. at the same time, I'm, I'm not knocking it, but it's just not my thing. Yeah, because we were talking before the potty, like rugby's more you're seeing, yeah? Yeah, man. yeah exactly. Yeah. And how good is, uh, you know, an elite level rugby union, the flow of play, like when, you know, you've just got a rolling rock and mall and just backs mm. fucking... It like they they say oh rugby the game played in heaven I think it's like obviously because uh, it's like a Christian brothers tradition so it's like a religious thing or whatever but um, fuck yeah like that elite level there's nothing better to watch I I probably watch more rugby league to be honest but um, it's it's there's more finesse to the game yeah. of union I got a bit of a thing on it um, you get an average game of league far better than an average game of union you get a good quality game of union. Far better than a good quality game of league. Mm. That makes sense. That's a, yeah, yeah, that's a good analogy. I've, I've heard a s- similar sort of premise before. Where I'm the same. Where we grew up, like Danny and I played Pine Rivers Pumas, ages like six to seventeen, basically like all the way through. We were going to have Shout a out the uh, under fourteen premiers. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, four, fourteen <laughs> premiers. What division? Div one. Div yeah, one. Div one. Mate, we beat um, Sunnybank. Yeah, we beat Sunnybank yeah. in a final at Redlands one year <laughs> in under 14. So one That's of the, awesome. Only the, one of two premierships I've ever won in my life. The other one was an Oztag premiership. <laughs> and so, the, uh, but the, that was awesome. The, assist, the assistant coach was bailing me out before the game for uh, texting his uh, daughter the night before. <laughs> 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 and uh, and then the young. other coach came over and said, fucking leave him alone, mate. He's about to go play in the grand final. He's trying to get his hand in his face. This daughter assistant there coach had yeah. come up to me big like, boy. oh, so you sent Nicole a message last night? No, no, night, it was a big hey, white man. Kiwi. Yeah, hey? like, you've been messaging Nicole, That's bro? Right. <laughs> like, uh, what, man? Like, fuck, man. You're stretching my hammies, Jeff. Like, <laughs> Shut that yeah. shit up Give me a fucking hand Come on man <laughs> <laughs> Went out and beat him But yeah that's like So I, I was glued to rugby All the way through And sort of fortunate enough To know a couple of guys Who had made it professionally So I was able to keep an eye On their careers And things like that But Transition to, to league now Where If there's a game between The Rebels and the Force On Friday night Or I got Broncos Cowboys It Mate, just becomes no-brainer. a no brainer Yeah Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. And, and w- again, I guess the exact same thing that we were talking about with the Muay Thai before. Like, what, what, what is it? It's it's just the it, like we the uh, game we, d- we we discuss a little bit in our uh, podcast with Dallin Murphy and and sort of uh, six degrees separation. Eli's actually mates as well, but um, I think for mine it was it's trying to understand the structure of Super Fifteen now. It's like I don't, I don't the different divisions mm. and fucking the way that it all plays out. It's it's too confusing for me. And as a non you know, paid TV s- subscriber or whatever, like, you don't get the game. Ah, so it's like... Of course, of course. If you're relying on, uh, you know, free-to-air television, then... You're waiting for fucking, tests. Yeah, you're waiting for tests. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a gotcha. dying sport in Australia, in my opinion. Mm. Mm. Do, do you think it's be. like, you know, obviously the Wallabies, like, a <sighs> couple of the recent score lines against fucking the All Blacks and shit like that. Is, is it just this era of blokes or is it, you know, Australian rugby in general or... Because... 
rewind like, you know, when we were kids and the fucking John Eels era and shit like that. They were like immortals, you know, living legends. And but it's kind of like the Australian swim team. It's like, where's that? Where's that talent gone, you know? Yeah, exactly. And that's shout, it. shout out anybody who's, you know... It's honestly like you guys are speaking Chinese to me right now. <laughs> yeah. I've been trying to decipher this shit the whole time. <laughs> yeah, right. we, 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 we go all over oh, the shop. two rugby's. Yeah. Yeah. It's two rugby's. <laughs> yes, What's sir. going on here? It Fuck. Is. <laughs> and and to the armchair uh, armchair fan, it would be it would be difficult to understand because they both start with the mm. exact same thing. That's it. Just team, yeah, different team names, and you'd be lost across like promotions. But I think, um, what do you chalk like, it up to, Bruce? Yeah, oppor- Bruce. opportunity maybe, o- like o- opportunity, money as well. Like Callan Ponga, perfect example where plays absolute weapon at Churchy, plays first fifteen all through high school as a prodigy. Bain gets a deal to go to the Cowboys. Plays twenties there, has a handful of games in first grade, and gets signed at Newcastle next year for eight hundred. Like, you can't get fucking eight hundred in Australian rugby out here, really, unless always, you are top tier. I always man. thought it was the opposite way around. Same. I always thought there was used more be, money yeah. in rugby. Because ah. remember, like when we were growing up, Union was poaching all the leagues. Yeah, yeah exactly, definitely. exactly. Still are to a degree, man. Like Corbetti starting for the Wallabies, then he was on the wing for Melbourne in the grand True. final last year. He's yeah. starting oh. wing, and now if you're an outside back. Curtis Rona from Mate. the Bulldogs, he's there as well. Anyone so get to start these days, eh? Pretty much. Over you go, Carmichael, oh. perfect, yeah. Mm. yeah. If you're Sonny, a league, you Sonny Bill made the move. Definitely, Pretty yeah. Pain. Sonny excelled, man. He could play yeah. whatever he what an, what an athlete! <laughs> what an athlete he is. Yeah. He can yeah. box as well. Like, yeah. Him and Paul Gallon are apparently want to box and are looking to actually get that done. It, it's probably like a fairly like garbage sort of fight, but, I mean, it could sell I'd, some, it could sell some it. tickets. Paul Gallon's sure. had a few fucking fights He's now, had right? a couple now, yeah. He's fought some dudes of fairly high calibre, but so is, um, so is Sonny. Like, he fought that Francois Botha in a, in a title fight. Wasn't but, but, that an but outrage? Du- but du- no. During the fight, Sonny started to gas late in the fight. It was scheduled for 12, 12 rounds. 10. Then they just go, no, <laughs> no, 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 it's actually 10. It's 10. He wins. He wins. Yeah, like, that's so <laughs> cool. <laughs> so <laughs> corrupt. Friends is there and they're like, what? I'm starting to fucking turn up. Like he was doing like almost what Mayweather did. Like Sonny's fading. He starts pouring He's on He's built him. a fucking Probably fight strategy on 12 rounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like, yeah. Calling it early. Calling yeah. it there. And like, that, no, it's a wrap. That's how corrupt, uh, like, corrupt some of it is, though. And, and I mean, I guess it's. Notorious for all sports to have, you know, betting corruption and stuff like that, but definitely in boxing. Yeah, have you, know, you ever had? Have much. you ever been involved in any decisions where you've just gone, "That was bullshit"? Like <laughs> I won that fight. <laughs> like you, any robberies or any Adelaide birds there just <laughs> stitching you up? <laughs> Shout out Adelaide bird. God, so many times. Yeah, so many times. I remember one time I was fighting in Melbourne for an Australian title um, in K1, and. Um, and my opponent was is just a knob, just a loud mouth, just knob. Les Clark, hope you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> Shout him out! I love it. I love it. Yeah, um, uh, just a just a dick. Hey, um, and you know, uh, we we rocked up to fight, and um, it, it was a war. Like this this kid bring it like as much of a knob as he is. Like yeah, he threw down. Bang man, fuck. Um, it was a tough fight. Um. But, you know, the whole way through it, as I was like, bro, you're ahead, but you've got to work. You've just got to keep working. Um, everyone in the crowd, everyone in the crowd, you know, huge crowd there, um, had, had me winning, um, you know. And then comes to the decision and they're like, it's a draw. What the? What the big, are, are you watching this shit? Did you see the fight? Man, I uh, yeah, lost my shit pretty bad. And um, and did you did you see it the same way when you watched it back as 100%. well? Yeah, exactly. 100%. That must be real painful. Because mm. it's, it's so painful, man. Because I left like for Queensland after w- empty, no belt, nothing. Yeah, mm. fought my heart out. Like, wasn't that just a prep? You know, leading up to the fight every day, Azza and I just training hard. You know, yeah, busting our asses down to get to weight. You know, we had to meet his demands, his weight, his style of fighting. Um, we took elbows and clinches out because, you know, that's what I'm good at. Um, you know, we met every one of his demands and he was just a dick the whole time. And then, and then when he, we get down there, it's a draw. Does it, does it make it easier when someone's a dick? Like, it, obviously, when you're going through a fight camp and you're preparing to fight an opponent, does it help if, you, if there's animosity there or it's just sort of like, no, 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 I'm focused on doing my thing? I, I mean, like... 
No, no, you, you, you never focus on that. Right. No way, man, because at the end of the day, you're in there to get a job done. Mm. Yeah, and that's win. Mm. That's it, uh, whatever the cost. So if you go in there thinking, oh, this guy's at, like, not saying I didn't, like, of course I was angry, but at, at the same time, before I walked out there and touched gloves, my mind was clear. Mm. Yeah. I knew exactly what I needed to do. You know, like, the, the training camp leading up to it, yeah, I was a little bit angry, but I'd, I'd never walk in there and and be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to smash mm. no, 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 ma- Wrong no matter mindset. how angry. Yeah, no matter yeah. how angry because, you know, it's just going to cloud your mind. And, you know, I always fight with aggression and bad intentions. But, um, you know, like, yeah, y- you can't go in there, mm. as you said, you know, with, with those feelings. You can't go in there with that clouding you because you will lose. Yeah, and, and we, we've actually touched on it with a, a few of the, the fighters that we've had on the podcast. But, you know, that, that mental game. Is, yep. is, is a really, you know, strong component of really any sort of physical discipline. Like, it, it, it traverses across many sports, but, you know, um, particularly the fight game where you, you really – there's a lot of a lot of visualisation, I suppose, that sort of has to go with that. Are you a big proponent of that yourself or um, – In a sense, yeah. Um, like, what's your, you know, mindset when you go into a fight? Are you channeling some in, inner darkness and shit or are you going nah. real sort of calm? Me? No, no, no. Oh, I, okay. Uh, it's, it's hard. Yeah, it's, mm. it's confidence. Like um, Conor McGregor self-belief spec um, visualisation yeah. or? Well, well, this one's going to – this is kind of a little bit of a story to get to the moment. Lay it on us, brother. We've okay. got nothing but time. Mm. So, I'll, I'll get the start of it over, over and done with quick. Lost a lot of fights. Yeah, just lost my way in fighting. Stopped caring. Um, stopped training hard, just started doing it to pay bills instead of actually fighting. I didn't care, didn't rock up to training, it was just a low life pretty much, it was nothing. Fighting you know? how often at this stage? Oh, like every month. Every like, month, yeah. <laughs> who, who cared? You yeah. know, just whenever. Like, going hard me. in training and the, the no, gym and shit no, as well? No, no, no going true, hard. Like true. I was literally just a mess. You just know? rocking just, up. Just rocking up, just doing it. And then anyways, one day, as I said to me, he's like, look, I know you love fighting, but, um, you know, if you lose again, you have to retire. I was like, oh, man, I'm like 24 or something. Like, True. I was, I was pretty young, 25, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was 25. Uh, I was like, I was like, oh, crap, you know. It hit me like a ton of bricks. So six weeks later, um, he was like, all right, so in six weeks you're fighting this guy. It was a step up in weight. Um, the guy was... Um, WMC champion He had a few Australian titles Awesome bloke um, Nick Rundle Anyways um, I, I didn't think I would be able to beat him And um, But anyways the, the Mark Edmondson He's a, Yeah Mark Edmondson Everyone remember that um, He's the man I, I messaged him When As I said that And And he He just put me Onto the right like mindset, right pathway. You know, tell I was him, tell f- him what, the, what the guy's um, job is, but yeah. So his his job is to, um, like help anyone in in anything in their life, but it's mainly sports people. You know, athletes achieve their highest possible like dream of, of what they can achieve. You know mm. what I mean? He's Through gonna, mental training and yeah, techniques and he's, shit. He's gonna <coughs> make you see what he did for me. I can only speak from my experiences. He made me see my worth, what I can. What, what I can achieve if I put myself to it, mm. you know? Like, it's all good and well to say, hey, man, you can be a millionaire, mm. do fucking the best in everything you do in your life. They're just words. He, mm. made, me, he made me believe, like, believe that I could do all this. And then when, when I started to believe it, I was like, crap, man, every week at training, I was just a new beast, a new weapon, you know? I was like, fuck, you know? Um, he just taught me, you know, no more excuses. Like, it was, wasn't with just fighting, you know. Like, it's every single thing in your life. Yeah. You know, mm. you have to be 100% committed. You can't just have one aspect of your life fighting that you care about and you forget about everything else. It's just going to crumble away. Everything has to fit together perfectly. Um, the next thing was I would always give myself a reason. to, You know, I'd like, I'd stop 1K shy of my run or I'd stop one round. You know, or I just put in fifty percent instead of eighty percent. You know, um, you know, he made me see that I needed to put in everything. So then I started to put in so much more than I'd ever give into a fight. You know, murdering myself every day. Um, you know, so that fast forward, I go into the fight, and this is my mindset how I walked in there. At first, like you know, um, 
I walked in there and I was like, I was so fit, like I was so ready, but I had doubt. I was like, oh my God, I, I can't, I don't know if I can do it. And it was mm. the same time as every other time I walked into a fight, whether I trained or not. It's hard to imagine, like, uh, and this is coming from somebody who doesn't fight, you know, but going into a fight without having doubt, you know, it just seems like it would be like a prerequisite for going into that, you know. Well, it's, it's hard to explain now, like. Situational you know, combat. I had so much doubt, like so much doubt. And then um, Preacher said to me just before I walked out, he goes, bro, you've done all this work. You've made all these changes. Look at you. Just do it. Mm. Walked out there. Um, no offense, Nick, but whooped him. You know, like, yeah, boy. like, like, you know, and everyone's seen the new me, you know, I walked in there and I just went, okay, you know, I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to take a backward step. Like I know fears there. I know fears there. Yeah. But it doesn't control me. You know, I know doubts there, but it doesn't have to control me. You know, me, I'm in control. So I'm going to walk in there. I know how to fight. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to take it to this guy. I'm not going to take a backward step. I'm going to keep putting the pressure on him. You know, I didn't have those bad intentions then. I just wanted to win really bad. So I wanted to win so much more than I wanted to breathe or beat. I remember I've never pulled up the chair, pulled up the chair in the third round, and then I've gone, no, 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 kicked it, you know. I wanted to win so much more than I wanted to even just be tired or, you know, like I was sore, like a, like nearly kicked my leg off, you know. Yeah. Him and I were kicking each other. The guy was brutal, like stopping people with leg kicks all the time. And I was like, I'm not dropping, I'm not nothing, you know. Like at the end of that fight, I had to get carried out of the ring after I won. You know, I yeah. couldn't walk, you know. Like that's how much of a war it was. Um, I guess my mentality when I walk in there is is just that every time. Like I don't have doubt because, you know, like it's doubt leads to, to failure, Straight up, like mm. you can't doubt yourself. Like, I I'll doubt myself in the lead up, you know, and that makes me push harder. So, I always, if I don't believe in myself before a fight, I'll push myself to a point where my body is at its absolute peak. And I know that I'll just walk in there and I'll go, All right, I've got to do this. Whether I believe in myself or not, there's a job to be done. Yeah. You can't, you can't have doubt, you can't have fear, you can't have any of that because. You don't you don't get that luxury. You got to fight. Mm. Like you have to walk in there. And fight Do you ever find that your mind fucks with you though? Uh, you doesn't play to. tricks on you. Doesn't it, it doesn't does before little later. little doubt thoughts creep in that you have to sort of acknowledge and then try the to time. push them out. Yeah, it's yeah. it's the, the mind is a motherfucker, eh? How it's like that self sabotage thing. But never you know all fight. all of those things you're saying. You know you want you want that fucking one hundred percent confidence and self belief and yeah. shit like well, that. And you see it in some people, but um, yeah, it must be hard to maintain. Maintain that, you know. Yeah. Mm. I was going to say, do you find you, you question yourself more, or you find you praise your opponent more? What, what Ooh, that's that's a hard one. Um, God, yeah, yeah. I guess I I question myself a lot more. Um, always praise my opponents. You always yeah. have to, you know. Yeah, they're, it's they're respect for the sport thing, and stuff. Same yeah. thing as you're doing. They're putting all the hard work in. Um, they're, they're giving up. They're they're making as much sacrifices as you are to be. Yeah. There. You know, you always got to put the praise on them. Um, I never have a single doubt when I'm in there, though. Mm. Like, you know, like the last time I ever had a doubt was I fought in Dubai. And I, I don't know what happened. First first round was a bit even. Second round, he just caught me with some elbows. And at that moment, I was like, I don't have to be here. You know, mm. as I just passed and stuff. I mm. was like, you know, looking for an option out then. New Brad. So this in. um this mental coach that you started working with was that before or after Aaron passed away? Uh, before. Before. Yeah, a couple of years. And before. you said obviously you went through a pretty dark period after that, and you know part of yep. uh, you know what you're sort of moving on with now is NFL and stuff like that, and finding different ways to move on. But like, how did that sort of um, your sports psychology go through that dark period, and how did you sort of like come back and wh and what is you know the the sort of I guess the mental idea behind the NFL and the, and the sort of thing that you feel from that. See, um, you know, Michael, what, what I also learned from him is, you know, at the end of the day, do this myself. And so as for after Azar, you know, I did that on my own kind of thing. And that's why I went through those dark places where I was like, oh, don't know if I wanted to fight. But, um, you know, having have, had seen him... Um, previously you know um after after as a past like you know it was it was what he taught me that helped me get through that you know it's a, it was it was a you know like you don't have to be weak you know you don't have to let this control you don't have to 
you know, you don't have to fall into a dark place. You don't have to become, you know, this mess of a thing. Like, you, you know, it's all choices. It's all choices mm. that you make, you know. Yeah. We, were, know. we were only having the, the discussion over email at work today, you know. Back to what you were saying before, you know, real, really powerful message that it's, you know, it's so important to have – you know, to have goals, you know, like and to have things that you're, you're working towards. Like we were talking about. Uh, and I think strong role models as well, man. Like, yeah, for you sure. You know, people who don't grow up with proper, you know, parental guidance or, you know, somebody like a coach or somebody like that stepping into that role and really sort of showing you how to be a human a little bit. Like, mm. Yeah. We were talking about, I don't personally watch it, but these boys are uh, ba- bachelor fanatics. <laughs> But, Shout um, out Sophie Monk. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and and apparently the the dudes on the the Bachelorette last night were having like a bri- bridge comp or something. That's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 They had like a, a a manliest man competition and the and the first one super low budget uh, competition, but they got all of the dudes to line up and do. Like uh, a plank, a core plank. plank. Yeah, <clears throat> good point. Yeah, and uh, the dude that one did seven minutes. How, how many how, minutes? How do you long do you reckon you could get in a plank? How long's a piece of string? Seriously, <laughs> come on. On, on national TV, <laughs> I reckon you've got at least ten minutes more than your usual. Effort. Yeah, <laughs> fight, 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 fighter over here though. He definitely have a longer one than most. Ooh, yeah. a long, yeah. much longer one than most. As has put us for a fair few holes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, true. Just, just hold it until someone says stop. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. how many? How many minutes? Like, I mean, do, you would obviously do those as part of your training. I don't, right? I don't time them. Like, yeah, I yeah. Literally timed one in a long time. Mm. I, I, I don't know, man. Like, yeah. Uh, seven minutes is. Pretty decent. Fuck top, yeah. Sounds like a top bloke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yeah. think he got evicted that night. <laughs> <laughs> he had a little dick there. <laughs> <laughs> I think the um the the, the I, I was reading on um, news dot com or one of one of those trashy sites or whatever that um. The bloke she picks is like one of the uh, is some intruder that's like just cashed up. Yeah, well, well, well they've given her like Sophie Monk's thirty seven. Yeah, and she's a celebrity, and they've given her all of these dudes who are like legit. I think the oldest one is maybe twenty nine, but ah, the, like okay. a whole bunch of twenty three year olds and shit. And in all her lead up, she's saying you know she wants an older man and this sort of shit. So they've given her a bunch of numpties, and mm. I think they've they've got plans of whoever they're. Getting to intrude. Rumor is that one of them's like heir to some millionaire yes. fortune that's yeah. gonna like propose exactly. on the spot, and the rest of these like owns a bunch of bars dudes, and shit. Yeah, they got exactly. no hope. Like it, the vibe like, is like, like she's the teacher and they're <laughs> the fucking yeah. children. Like. That's really. Like, yeah. She's yeah. dated the who's who of Hollywood. Is she gonna come and hook up with the fucking chippy from Gold Coast? Could you? Like, <laughs> you know yeah, what the exactly. second year. <laughs> yeah, so I said, uh, mature age apprentice. Like. <laughs> I, was gonna, I was gonna say the other day. Um, I was watching. Uh, there was previews for it, and um, it was a guy getting given from the parents. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I was, it was the first time I was actually a little bit intrigued by the TV series, but um, <laughs> man, I want to know what sort of what sort of things were they saying? Yeah, the yeah, 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 it's yeah. Nothing. It's this this, this one dude. This yeah, 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 this yeah. yeah, this one dude that's fucking. He's he thinks he's fucking hilarious, but he's mm. he's like trying way too hard. But uh, what was he talking about? He was talking about the difference between lust and love, mm. and just saying all. Oh, Lust is when you want to bang them, but love is oh, whatever. But like, <laughs> no, they fucking g'd the whole thing up. Yeah, like, that's it. It is like it's the, pretty much yeah. nothing. But Ultimate that dude, that dude's yeah. another numpty. But they're all numpties, man. Yeah, There's like no exactly. way any of those dudes are fit enough mm. to get there with Sophie Monk. No, no yeah. fucking way. I hate Sophie Monk. Man. No, me she, too, bro. Oh, <laughs> bro, she grinds my gears. I don't know why, but yeah. yeah. Was, 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 was it a show in Idol? We already worked out. Pop star. Idol. She won a pop star. Pop stars, yeah. pop stars, pop stars. Pop she stars. was in Bardo. Oh, she was in Bardo. Right. She was in that girl that's group. They bring up um, Poison seven. right <laughs> now. <man. laughs> Prior to that, she started out as a um, Marilyn Monroe at um, uh, Movie World. Movie World, yeah. that's the one. Bro. Yeah. No broke, shit. broke through. Yeah. Fuck it. There you go. There's so. Oh, but yeah. she actually won me over in this show, man, because she's quite down to earth. Like, yeah, I don't know. She owns her like I'm a bogan from the Gold Coast. You know, Monica. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She's just got that real horse-like fucking trans voice going on. But, but oh. more she's got like a pack of day smoker right? voice. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. she does yeah. smoke yeah. dories, doesn't oh my she? God. There was oh, I don't know nose beers and lung candy, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big time, hand in hand. Man. This one dude uh, put puts Legend. his um puts his nephews up there, and then she asks the nephews, "Oh, how many boyfriends has your uncle had?" This is before oh, she's met him or yeah. whatever. How many? How many girlfriends? <laughs> <laughs> they put a bunch of homos in there. 
how many times has he gone by? Like? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> full sex, yeah, full sex Q and A. He's got arm. So yeah, that is like. So has he had many girlfriends? He's like, nah, a couple. He's like, he's, they're like, yeah, a few. He's like, oh, she's like, how many? Like, two hundred. Oh, two fifty. Yeah, two. And yeah. then they're like, uh, no, no, like four. Yeah, she's like, <laughs> and oh, then it's like good. obviously that's her benchmark, you know. Yeah. She's like, oh, I've had about three th- three hundred plus roots. She's like, in a relationship with Jason Statham, fucking Russell Simmons. Oh man, she would have been like, getting passed around like. Yeah, and she claims yeah. it too. That's Buttered the bread. Uh, other part. She does. Yeah, she's admitted it, that on the Colin and Jackie yeah. O show and shit before. I've I've listened to that. What she she's on a it. huge salute. Uh, that Jesus. she's that she's been through like oh, she's listed out the people <laughs> she's been through in Hollywood like she's right. sort of like plus of, of plus, plus, plus 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 yeah. plus heaps of pe- heaps of dudes mm. with no names like oh, young up and coming male models that are yeah. currently unknown and the, shit she might <laughs> yeah. just like slayed Ty- her <laughs> Tyson Beckford unearthed and shit <laughs> she'd have her own like yeah. sexual health yeah. like physician uh, I reckon yeah oh, <laughs> so- Sophie Monk please do not bring a defamation case against yeah. us yeah. <laughs> allegedly it's all allegedly <laughs> but we already 43. worked out Sophie that, uh, no. I think uh, I think Southern Star Endemol's um, policies would be such that we'd never get a bachelor contestant on here. Shout no, out Matty J. Do you remember Matty J from uh, nightclubs in Brisbane and shit? He was the one that was just the bachelor. No, nah, no, no. He no. used to work the door at the GPR. Mm-hmm. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it funny Shout how you Matty get J. all these like C grade celebrities that are like. C- Oh, but yeah. just nobody's see, see Matty J. Yeah. Matty J. would never be allowed to come on this podcast. Never, he'd never. be contracted in never. no way. Yeah, he'd be NDA'd up to the to mm. the nines mm. for sure. sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But shout out Matty no, if you want to no. break contract, dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I was about to say, nor would we really want <laughs> want to have him on, but it would be an, it would. Mate, be I reckon he would be awesome to pick his brain on what mm. that experience was actually yeah, like, like what it was that, like the. True. Producers it's scripted, like, I reckon, man, surely. Oh, like so much of it would be. Definitely. And they do the, all these monologues like, that he's you know, reading between scenes and stuff would yeah. be uh-huh. written for him. Uh-huh. It'd be like a 40 minute date stretched out over like a six hour shoot. And for it, sure. apparently, yeah. like each person has their own producer. So it'll be like, okay, Eli, cut. All right, so you go with your producer and. You know, Sarah yeah. goes with hers and then fucking they're both like, okay, so in this next scene, like, you know, this is your opportunity to maybe like, you know, tell how you really feel or whatever, like, yeah, and they'll G you up it. and then so you go out and, um, yeah, it'd be fucking, it'd be interesting to see how it, uh, how it all works behind the scene, eh? It would, um, because that's the thing, they don't get to hang around each other when the cameras are off, so everything's organic when they do, say, action, mm. right, so... You'd be out, out for a day and, yeah, they just... Because you can tell, man, there's, the there's a certain, scene. like, there's a certain, uh, you know, visual cue that you can get from a person when they're feeling awkward, despite the fact that they're still going through pleasantries. Like, you can see these people sometimes, they get that, like, flushed look in their face where it's kind of like, oh, this is awkward, this is but fucking I reckon tension. That, that's just human nature. It you is. Know? Like, everybody gets that, you know. It, it, you can be the most world's most confident person, but... If you're in the company of somebody or you're just in one of those situations where there's nothing to say... Passing or, someone also, in a hallway yeah, it's and also, you're both trying to go left. It's like, also like, the aspect oops. of like the, the other watching, you know, the, the voyeur aspect. Mm. It's the same as when we switch the microphones on on the podcast. Like before we switch the microphones on, everybody's talking and it's like, you know, casual. But the second we're like, okay, we're recording now. Everyone's like, oh, shit, we're recording this, you know? Yeah, like, there's an and, it, and it's the same when they put like a camera on people, you'd have to think, you know? Mm, yeah, definitely. There is an element of nerves that I guess creeps into anything. And it, it's like what we were talking about before, you know? It's, it's just about getting on top of them. And some people just have a, a tendency to be able to get on top of it better than others, you know? And having a technique, I think, is, like, a huge thing, you know. If you've got somebody who's really got the method. And it's so interesting that, like, you know, some people, you know, the the mental coach, for example, knows exactly how a fighter's psychology should be going into a fight. But he himself maybe doesn't have the, you know, physical capabilities to do so. But then somebody else has the physical capabilities to do so, but not the same, you know, mental Mm. strategy that this guy does. And that's that's coaching 101, isn't Mm. it? You know, like that's your Craig Bellamy's. Not all players make great coaches. And, Mm. you know, most coaches don't make great players. Mm. I wanted to to ask Brad about... uh, the world of caged Muay Thai. Um, just for the, the casual listener at home, if you could explain the difference between standard Muay Thai and cage Muay Thai. Is it cage Muay Thai is... Yeah. Was that something initiated by John Wayne Parr on, on the yeah. coast? Is that his organisation? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, cage Muay Thai is exactly the same rules as Muay Thai, except um, you lock those cage doors 
and then like it's just so different like um it's cool like it's it's crazy you know there's there's no there's no corner to get backed into mm. but it's locked like you're locked in this cage you can't go anywhere so no matter you know no matter what's happening you know it, it's it's a completely it's it's so hard to explain cuz mm. you guys like haven't experienced yeah, that's exactly wrong. exactly um but yeah, like I mean, I I personally love it. My hands are fucked though from it. Uh, but like I do, uh, I love the thrill. You know, it's it's crazy. Mm. Um, injuries happen so easy. You know, like uh, my last fight, um, where I won that belt over there, uh, was on. You know, the the last cage Muay Thai. It was just a jab that I was using, but you know, such little gloves. Yeah. You know, they're so effective. Mm. So there's that that certain aspect of um you know like i know it's like a thrill i yeah. guess it's almost like a, it's yeah. like a, oh you yeah. know jeez like this a, is same same but different like oh yeah. there's a bit of variety here i can get stopped here or, or mm. i'm gonna stop him you know like speak of the devil there is we're on the tv is john wayne Parr. first round ko this says Oof. man and and well, one of the questions that i wanted to ask you before too you know it while we've got that man on the on on the TV, who I think I read the other day has had three hundred and thirty something stitches in his face. What? Oh, have you have you had three hundred and thirty? Yeah, three hundred and thirty just in his face. Jeez you know, so um, how many? I've actually literally only ever been cut once. Right. Um, and that was here. Like you can probably see it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I can. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 16. 16. Is that from an elbow? elbow? It's got to yeah. be an elbow. Yeah, yeah they always t- tend to be. Been elbowed so many times and uh, it was so funny before I walked out to that fight. I was like, someone said, they're like, oh, you know, you know, just be safe. I was like, what's the worst going to happen? I've, I've never been cut. I'm not going to be cut. <laughs> 30 seconds later. Murphy's Law. I'm, I'm cut, bleeding everywhere. Would that, that, that must fuck with your psyche. Surely when you're covered in your own blood. I mean, certain people are obviously psyched up by it, I suppose, but, you know. It was it was weird. Look, um, it dropped me. So I was on the ground uh, and, you know, I looked down and I've gone, fuck. Because there's blood everywhere, you know. It was pouring out. I was like, fuck, I'm bleeding. And then just same thing, fight or flight. So I just went, all right, Brad, you got to get this done. Let's go. Plus, I always wanted a cool picture where I got blood on my yeah. face. I'm still fighting. <laughs> yeah. What warrior specs? Yeah. Like <laughs> win win. Put that yeah. bad boy in black and white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Blow That's it up. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah in, in that situation, you know, my first reaction was like, oh, oh they're going to stop mm. the fight. Then my second reaction was like, just fight till it's over. And that's what I did. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, a lot, a lot of people talk about, you know, uh, a lot of fighters talk about bad cuts as well as n- not only obviously the risk of the fight getting stopped but also the – if it's a bad one, you know, like it dwindles your performance as, as the fight drags on through just not having as much blood in your system, you know. Like if it's a sort of – Joe Daddy Stevenson mm. versus BJ Penn spec sort of bloodbath where, you know, like, I mean, you're leaking absolute, like, bloody, le- it wouldn't be leaders, but it'd definitely be in the hundreds of mills, yeah. you know, some there's, of those fights. There's some fighters who just seem to thrive off that violent style more than others, you know. Mm. You see a GSP or somebody like that, they're much more sort of methodical and averse to damage in their approach, whereas, you know, some guys like fucking Robbie Lawler styles. Mm. <laughs> what you got? Canterbury or what you got Friday here, night Eli? at Canterbury? <laughs> no, 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 Mooney Valley. Mate. Mooney Valley, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There we go, yeah. It was either one or the other. That was it. <laughs> Friday night uh, at the Valley. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for anybody yeah. listening, Eli had a... Uh, a horse racing tonight, so fuck yeah. No, wasn't not, uh, not mine, not mine. Wasn't Chris Lynn's fucking nose beers horse? Wasn't it? <laughs> nose beers. <laughs> what a great name for a horse. horse yeah, yeah what a great name for a horse. Yeah. There, was, there was one um, they put up this week. Uh, it, was, yeah. it was called Up the Rippers. Yeah. Yeah. Off, <laughs> off, off, off to the Rippers. Off to the Rippers. Yeah. Sorry. Off, off to the, the Rippers. rippers. <laughs> usually, don't let, usually they don't let that get past. But mm, um, they're shit. real strict. So oh. because it's like so you because it's make rippers it because yeah. it's not. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're cool. Yeah. Well, nose beers. That's like yeah. pretty esoteric, you know? es- Especially because it's Select spelt few people. K. Yeah, 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 nose. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what it is, Brad. Sorry, Brad. We're speaking Chinese again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Basically, horse names. And um, if you can get like a bit of a sort of quirky name going, it's um, always sort of good. And um, someone they've uh, in, in, or sort of. One of the boys in, came on, yeah. And um, nose beers is usually referred to as um, oh. this <laughs> with. N O S E, 
but they're going to uh, put it to K N O W beers. So like they know beers, but secretly <laughs> it's actually nose beers. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Play on words, mate. Yeah. That's good, eh? It's clever, yeah. clever. Uh, Ways to beat it. I've I've always been a mad fan of horse racing, man. There's something about it. I don't you, um, don't bet nearly as much as I as I used to. Did but you um, bet for your old man as a kid? Sorry. Did you bet for your old man as a kid, like allegedly? Um, no, no, no. I had I had for sure. Well, like I'd go out and bet with my dad at the races. So you you would group. like how old? Check and form guides and shit like oh, that. Eight, nine years old. Wow, man. Yeah, really? Inst- really? instantly into it. Legendary man. status. Yeah, right it, was, it was like what? <laughs> just watching what you hear. <laughs> Found it. It was like watching, um, just doing what your old man was doing, sort of thing. It was just fun, and it was a, it was a bonding thing as well. Like mm. it would be Saturday afternoon. Both, both Has it always it. been a numbers thing for you? Lisa and Homer spec. Yeah, yeah, daddy <laughs> daughter, daddy daughter day. day. <laughs> <laughs> NFL, yeah, calling up the fucking local bookie, like, like hey, Mole. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Like it was just um, su- super fun and just gr- growing up around it as well. Got to like just be out at the races and it was amazing how many like I'd see trainers' names in the paper and shit like that. And dad would just get them to come over and like shake my hand and shit like that. Yeah, and sort right. of like meeting these people that you read about and see and just being yeah. around being around it was super fun. But I still uh, I don't don't watch it week in week out anymore. But um. If it's on, I could easily sit down and watch it. No, no drama at all. It's it's cool as a kid because I can always uh, when when you meet sort of celebs or you know what you deem to be celebs, I suppose at the time. Like I can remember um, when I was a kid, like uh, my my dad was or still is friends with John Conley, like um, and took me along to and he was coaching the Queensland Reds at the time and took me along to a Queensland Reds game. And I got to go into the sheds like afterwards, but um, but I remember obviously you get to meet them, but mm. you're in the sheds as a like a nine year old or whatever, where as exactly like your gym, man. Like I mean, it's a <laughs> like, it's a communal shower, and there's a whole bunch of real burly dudes walking around with their piece out. Like and you're just like, why have you bought me yeah. here? You know? yeah. <laughs> I grew up that. Do you day. reckon yeah. that's an old school thing, man? I see like the I reckon the older the blokes are in the gym, the more likely they are to be waving their dick in your face. You know. <laughs> Walking time, around mate. like Every nuding time. up in the sauna and shit, yeah. but uh, it seems the younger generation is a bit more sort of like uh, conservative, conservative, yeah. like getting the. I remember Drew was saying um, that he, w- when he first broke into the Wallabies, he was like tw- twenty one, just sharing his undies because Lottie and Wendell are in the room, right? <laughs> 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 just, share, just sharing his undies, but now he's like. He even said like only like recently like nah get, nude up get in there with the boys like, yeah come on like he's putting shit on the rookies now for sharing yeah. in their undies so well, he's come full circle sort of I'm, I'm sure it would sort of have that element to it of you'd almost be putting yourself more like in the in the limelight by sharing sharing in your undies you know like let, let's just ask what's, yeah. what's it like man what's the, what's the <laughs> dynamic man? Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll give you so break it down for us man I I've, I've always found uh, Brisbane mate. Myself personally, everyone's in their jocks, right? Right. Um, lived in Sydney, lived in Canberra, lived overseas, and mate, they get starkers. Mm. And initially, it, I was always take a bit of a shock, you know, um, by it because sort of growing up, it's like you don't get starkers. It's fucking re- usually referred to as probably being gay, which is nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, but, sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, so, but. Uh, Mate, I was the same thing. Did a full circle by the end of it because I didn't want to be the guy who wasn't yeah. the starkers, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, get, get the kid right. off. And and, and oh, it's such a funny dynamic too because I wonder, like, girls would have to be the same. You know, a bunch of chicks sort of, you know, standing around getting ready and shit like that. Yeah, standing around in their bangers. I don't think they care as much as guys do that. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Or is that like, just how we're imagining it? Sizes everything. <laughs> hey. yeah. Like literally. And that's why I don't get naked in the <laughs> <laughs> Size is everything. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you get what you're given though, man. You've yeah. got to rock it, man. And, and like, given a pretty yeah. rough hand, man. That's funny. But yeah, that's that's probably how we envision it to be like with a whole bunch of... Girls just standing around in bangers and bras and undies smacking each other on the ass <laughs> and whatnot. But, uh, I'm sure it probably doesn't uh, doesn't exactly tr- transpire that way. But no, nah, it would. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if other sports other than footy like have the exact same sort of thing because footy. Tennis Always. players ain't fucking going and having groups. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, in mate, Andy Murray w- ain't, ain't walking <laughs> in with his sword out. Yeah, oh. but like, but you know how you know how footy footy has that sort of I guess that. Oh, well, like, it's like d- the dynamic of gangers and shit as well. Like it's, where it's the boys, man. It's like yeah. you know, it's the boys, and and y- you only have to watch an episode of like the Footy Show or see 
see footy players get interviewed when they're in camp with all the boys that it's exactly like high school man mm. it's like you know the, it's like you haven't you haven't left that camaraderie that that mateship vibe that you had going you know it'd Other be fucking awesome life you know mm, that's right that's the way it is mm. it. but it is like you can't help but sort of um you know play into that pack mentality that's what it is like it, it's like it becomes a group collective energy you know especially mm. when everybody's on the same training everybody's you know going into the same wars and and, yeah. and eating the same shit everybody's working to the same goal there's this like bonding that happens with the team where all of a sudden fucking it's this collective energy that when you run out onto that field it's like you know you're protected by your brothers in arms mm. you know yeah. everyone sharing the same sexual partners <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm saying is like would it would it be this same as if it was like a, a, a <laughs> like a, a bloke's basketball team or a bloke's Amazing. soccer team or a bloke's. You I, know, think the, I think the I think the I think the physical and right. and Eli could probably speak to this, but I think the like you know physical com- combative aspect to it like takes it to that next level where it's like you know they say that rugby is is like war in peacetime right. or whatever. If, if you're the New York Knicks on the road throwing down each night going back to the hotel afterwards those boys some team bonding yeah, as yeah, a it doesn't matter what sport you're in if so you're many collect, inside you like, jokes definitely there'd be, there'd be so much of that where inside pro- jokes are gold man professional like, sporting teams travelling like you name it whatever sport they're in there's still testosterone filled dudes like oh, that's 100%. True. The bad that's bad true badminton true. team dudes there at the Olympic Village cleaning up like it would be <laughs> yeah. if you could be if, b- if you could play in one elite sports team like oh, in team. any any code, Ooh. any any oh. people, you know, you'd play yeah. basketball. You'd play basketball. Yeah. Yeah. Where would you, what sort of like which franchise would you slot into NBA right team? now? If they'd be like, you can just come off the bench, you like. Oh man, I don't even follow it really, yeah. bro. But I just watch it. They make a lot of money in the uh, yeah yeah super, yeah yeah, yeah, that, yeah that that's it. That's all yeah. celebrities. So. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> L- LA Lakers, yeah. I reckon. I, I, Rich I'd and famous. <laughs> and I'd play. Um, if I was to play any team sport in the world, in terms of. Marketing and fame to make it super big. I'd play soccer, bro. In oh, a, in so a you nutshell. can. Oh, choose the sport. Yeah, I, would, I, I wouldn't take you choose Ronaldo. the franchise. Oh, no, yeah, oh, for the basketball. That's what I asked. Oh, but um, yeah. for, if I could play any team sport in the world and make it big, for marketability wise, it would either be soccer or baseball. Yeah, would, it would be Wait, one of the two. Are we are we just not doing this because we want to do this? Like, do we have to do it to make it big? What if it's already big? Like, no, 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 no. Whatever, it, it's whatever. Yeah, whatever you up, yep. NFL. Um, NFL. DE right next to um, JJ, JJ White. White. Oh, oh my god, dude, yes. a monster. What, what franchise is that? He plays for Houston Texans. This yeah. big, big white American. He's basically like a same dimensions Chuck as Hull, Brock. Right? He's oh. he's basically the same physical What's dimensions that as Brock. JJ, Jesus, yeah. And then no, 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 no JJ, just, just the letters. Yeah, just the letters. Yeah. And then what, like W A T T? There you go. Yeah, hard and he's got like a sixty-five inch box jump, and he's the size of uh, really. Yeah, he's the size there of we Brock. Are. First one's sick. So he's just a he's just a Brock Lesnar spec character. A monster man. Right, R- yeah. He's raised through his own social media. Has raised over thirty-five million bucks for like the hurricane victims in really? Texas, like straight up. Jeez, just, just a cool. All round good dude, man. Yeah, and th- they're the athletes that you're dealing with. You know, like that's why be, when you've got that pool to choose from. You really are just getting the the genetic freaks that you know are are competing against each other, and and we've I know we've discussed it on the podcast before, but how good is that play? The, the, no. These guys don't these guys don't you know buy into the whole um, you know USADA program or, or anything like that. You know, like they do the NFL does in house testing. I think as it as it I understand it. I mean, what. There would have to be so like fuck all of them get busted. I think it's sort of like less than a percent or less than three percent or something. If you think about the UFC and how big the UFC roster is, or in comparison to the NFL, how small it is, and the amount of dudes getting popped, there should be by you know all rational thinking a fucking shitload of NFL players consistently getting popped. These dudes are enormous and and like you know crazy athletes at the yeah. top echelon of their game. Exactly. Like, it does. It just doesn't seem to be the same testing. Yeah, and and it isn't, and 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 that's the long and the short of it is is it's obviously an in-house program that they can catch people and sort of say, hey, listen, man, we just popped you for this, so you need to fucking settle down on that, and you know, like, I mean, yeah, check out his uh, box jump, that, man. Yeah. What's that? You're gonna slide that, do you? Well, is it like that in? It would have to be an element of that in rugby and rugby league, I would there not? For, for the party drugs, yeah, you sort of get right, a... Right, but not performance enhancing. Well, the in-house, as far as I'm aware, the yeah, in, the in-house yeah. stuff is. Uh, the party drugs, it's like you get a warning. Yep. Um, and then it can sort of go probably to like the NRL, mm. um, 
or the... I'll send it to you like your, your CEO of your club to Todd Greenberg and your manager or something like that. I'm yeah. pretty, pretty sure oh, with the, with the policy. Okay. Yeah. But the performance enhancing, man, is fuck, mate, you're out of there. Yeah, zero, right? See, yeah. for the NRL. Call, call yeah. me yeah, a... Every, pretty much everything, I'm pretty sure, you know. That's right. I really feel for a bloke like Sandor Earl in, um, in the NRL, if you know his backstory. He was one of the first ones to pop for Stephen Dank, like the guy that the Sharks got the, put through. And uh, so he's, he supplied peptides to Sandor Earl through, through an injection when he was trying to rehab an injury. Sandor took it in blind faith that this was a, a doctor who knew what he was doing. He got rubbed out of the game for five years. A bunch of those Sharks guys got basically with a slap on the wrist compared to that. They went, went out and won a premiership the following year. Yeah. This guy got rubbed out for five years, went to five. Thailand and started his own gym, this professional footballer. And he's only uh, looking at coming back to try and make a crack at the NRL in oh, the 2018, oh. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just say the only difference for him was he was at Penrith and um, he was actively seeking Dank. Whereas right. Dank, Dank was actually involved with the Cronulla Cup Club. Right. So that's the only sort of, for myself, looking from the outside in, whereas a part where they can sort of put a big black na- black mark through his name. Mm, he thing. sought yeah. the advice of him. Yeah, yeah you know, right. he's actively gone and done that. I, you know, the club hasn't even put, Penrith didn't even put him onto that. Right. You know, yeah, so, so that, that can be a problem then. Yeah. 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 I, was, I, was, I was talking to a mate today, um, actually today, so... Um, what they did to Benny Barber last year, you know, they go out and, no, two years ago, they go out and win a um, premiership, um, sorry, last year. And um, two days, start to rock up and test him. And, um, mate, far out, you go win, a, you go get any team that go win, go win a grand final and go test them two days later, I'm pretty sure every single one of them will pop. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. so unfair. I just, I just, I don't know, like, there's an element of, of scepticism that I have that, that sort of says that, these franchises which are effectively businesses mm. at the end of the day who, you know, like who their athletes are, you know, their, their, de- yeah. their dependency on income. If you have an in-house program and, and your guy who you're paying, you know, $32 million or whatever, or, you know, pops for something and you catch him first, he's obviously not going to publicise it to anybody that you've had a word mm. to him. You, you're the only people seeing the tests so, you know, you don't need to publicise it to anybody mm. but yourselves and you can just sort of say, hey, listen, you know, like we need to manage this problem, you mm. know. Like, I mean, but I don't know. Like you said before, you know, like I'm talking totally out of school. I have no fucking clue whatsoever. But, yeah, I don't know. But, I mean, especially in the fight game, you know, like, I mean, there would be no testing like at a – in the in the sort of amateur sort of realms and, and a lot oh, of just, even – Just blood tests for like – Diseases and shit. Right. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. That's still, good. They do that. Brad, Brad, yeah. Brad. Brad always um, comes up. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always. Always. I was surprised you had so many fights, man. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's top test city. Didn't now. know there was so many <laughs> types of heaven. <laughs> 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 I, I think they just stopped testing you after they just get sick of it. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, this, this thing's <laughs> glowing like a fucking rose. This is just costing us money at this point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I guess you, you got you got to I guess at that element. Almost accept the fact that whoever you're fighting against might be juiced up. Oh yeah, fought heaps of them, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Heaps, heaps and them, you man. can tell, yeah. like oh, yeah. what what, what sort exactly of gives it away. Like everything, they're you know, uh, for for the set weight that we're supposed to be fighting at, like they're just huge, hard, huge, lean. like dense. You know, you can just tell, like they're they're fine. You know, someone like. You know, you can train every day as hard as you want, do as much as you want, not, not touch anything, and you'll still just look the same. You know, they, they, then you see people coming in, you know, they're not training that hard, and uh, they're coming in overly conditioned, and, you know, but it all, it all, man, all that show just goes to waste. First round, they gas out every time. Really. Yeah, every right. Every time, and they all fall. So you, yeah. you find the performance enhancing doesn't enhance their performance. I mean, like, I mean... Surely it depend on Depending the, on mate. what they're taking Yeah, as well. I guarantee yeah. if Honest- they were shooting up a whole bunch of EPO or something Their cardio would be off the Hon- charts Honestly, like, it just It comes down to the person fighting Yeah You know It, it just But but it just um, And, 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 it's, and it, it, it's cool that you have that mentality Because a lot of guys, you know, sort of Talk about you know a lot of a lot of the MMA guys anyway in the UFC talk about fighting guys on steroids as just fighting mentally weak people you know but at the end of the day you are fighting somebody who's got an unfair advantage on yeah. you you know and well it's like the up. John Jones thing you know the I think it was the tweet that Daniel um, Rumble Johnson actually made um, made afterwards that saying you know for him to 
you know, do that feint and then get the high kick. That's a fight IQ thing that's not related to performance enhancing drugs. You know what I mean? You can't take a drug that's going to tell you to set that up and make that decision. But, you know, I've said it a thousand times on this podcast, but there's always that, you know, uh, the thing about PEDs is people think that it's, you know, totally cheating but there's that element of hard work that still goes hand yeah, in hand like with that it, that you it, can't deny cheating? you know can, like my, my honest opinion well, on how it many is, su- how many different like, supplements are there out there that are all essentially performance enhancers actually, you know like whether you even do. if it's nutrition and shit like that but like, like, my, it's I, I guess the thing is where it's difficult if um you know one person is 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 taking something and the other person's thinking it's not allowed yeah we got uh montgomery the uh Hairless. Resident hairless cat. Hairless cat, mascot of the podcast. He's uh, crawling, crawling up Brad's <laughs> leg. Yeah, <laughs> Trying to attack Brad's junk. <laughs> yeah. There's not much there, yeah. mate. Keeps, uh, <laughs> it looks like, it looks like yeah. a little hand keeps yeah. coming up. Right yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's yeah. basically an alien, but yeah. uh, he'll, he'll, he'll practice his rock climbing on, on people. Yeah, he's a fr- freaky. And he just ambushes you out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. like, all of a he sudden, hides behind the furniture and sort of like as you're walking past will come out and give you like a sort of three-hit combo on the legs like <laughs> bah, 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 and then just sort of run away. Yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Short time, man. <laughs> long, long, long weekend this weekend. Hell Is it? Yeah. Boom, Hell yeah. boom. Labor I'm day taking Monday. an extra day off too. I've got Ooh, four days off. That's solid. That's real solid. Yeah. 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 Frothing Been that shit. Stinking fucking hot here in Brisbane too. Like I love it. Love it when it's sort of... Um, when it's hot and you're at the coast, but Brisbane just absolutely... It is sweltering Kings, at the man. moment and it's only fucking September. Mm. I think today was 36 degrees or something like get, that. So yeah, yeah. It's yeah. going to be nasty. I'm almost feeling like a uh, fucking... I can't even live... Like, you know, I definitely couldn't live somewhere like Darwin oh, or... <laughs> bailed him up Cass, Cass just bailed him up In the kitchen Freaked the fuck out of him But I'm almost thinking Brisbane's starting to get too hot I think we all need to To migrate a little further south mm. But escape then remember this The winters heat. are so much exactly. colder You're so right This man. winter just gone I've Was never fucking wrong. nothing oh, I'm, with, I'm with you on that <laughs> You need to You need to be almost tr- Hashtag I'm never wrong You need to be almost <laughs> transient You know In the sense that you Like because Fuck even Northern New South Wales Spec area Like you're down there In the winter It's like chilly as you know? Yeah see I don't mind A little bit of cold As long as you're Prepared for it You know You've yeah. got good Good clothes Good Heating and a house set up, you know, fuck you, sweet. Good Pe- herb. People live in some. Yeah. <laughs> well, d- down Funk that way. Down for the winter. Yeah, have some property. You could grow some herb. People live yeah, in man. some fucking cold places, man. My parents are actually in uh, Alaska at the moment, and uh, it's apparently not the best time of year to actually visit. So it's obviously fucking crazy, overcast, and just right. you know, my mum's basically not having a good time because she's right. like, you know, fucking. Bleak. It is harsh here. Mm. Like it's it's fucking. People that live there are you got to be a different kind of animal to mm. to desire to go and live out in that extreme, like inhospitable fucking definition of place for a human being, you know. Yeah. But still surviving there is mm. like it's fucking crazy it's, desire to want to go do that. You know? Especially those sort of places that you know exactly like that, where if you effectively lose your fire or you, you lose your you know you get you get you get ga- <laughs> gas out of your you know out of your furnace or whatever you you aren't going to survive you know eventually you know within the next couple of hours yeah That's your it, house yeah. is going to cool down and you're going to fucking start to freeze to death and mm-hmm. it doesn't matter how many blankets you put yeah. on from inside your your gaff you're, you're going to croak it. There's a good, vice yeah. uh, called luck. Hymo's um, Arctic Refuge or something where a bunch of these sort of like uh, Hymo's hey. Hymo oh, is his name. Sorry, I was just, heard that totally <laughs> wrong. just excited like, about it. Like, yeah. weird, weird, where is this place? Weird, weird thing to admit to watching on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he basically like lives in the farthest place, and because he's married to a, a native uh, American woman, he's he's allowed to go into this territory that's like so far fucking north into Alaska. But um, <laughs> I didn't know. Mon- Monty's terrorizing. <laughs> the fire goes out, and you have to try and find your cone piece. Like, <laughs> like that. Yeah. Worst nightmare. You just, no, you that's the worst, bro. You can't even light it up. Yeah. yeah. Didn't, didn't even think of that. You'd find your, hand, you'd find your handgun and end it there, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Shit, shitload of um, Bic lighters just like <laughs> lying around. <laughs> <laughs> you only have to go camping to realize how inequipped we now are to survive in any kind of situation that's not like civilization, oh, yeah. that's no, not all screwed, set man. up for us. It's yeah. like, 
it's all well and good to go camping, but after two nights, you're like, well, we've got three bananas and half a dozen eggs left. Like, mm. can we survive another day on that? After that, you're fucked. Like, what are you going to eat? Maybe maybe find some bugs that you can survive on yeah. for a little while, but... So true, man. I remember, they're, like... They're not that tasty, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I remember... Around, that cricket protein? Like, I w- went, went up to Townsville, like, uh, back... Oh, I don't know, maybe, like, floods sort of time, like, when Brisbane sort of flooded and we got all that rain. 74. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chris is old as fuck, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, Br- Bruce Holloway was All this cut time off. And didn't up, realize he's seventy three. Br- Br- Bruce <laughs> Bruce Holloway was cut off in like a whole bunch of spots, and going into the towns of Woolworths and just like being no pro- fresh produce. All the bread gone, you know. Like I mean, they they, they had mm. fuck all because obviously, yeah. and it was in the space of you know a week, you know. So people were obviously at that stage stocking up, and you yeah. just it become alarmingly apparent that if we had like some sort of cataclysmic event that sort of affected like logistics, how long before your neighbours home invade you? Exactly. Mm. How long mm. before your neighbours home invade you? And they're like, you know, hey, listen, like. We've got one can of spaghetti left in the fridge. We need some If food. we're going to survive, oh, we're no, going to no, need sorry, to go we've back We've only got our food here. No, no, no. I don't think you understand. Yeah. We're coming in. Yeah, like, yeah, fucking, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, man, all, all I've got Welcome. is... yeah. The back door's open. <laughs> <laughs> all I've got is some sugar and this KY jelly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I looked into this one time. As a, um, it's in Northern Territory. There's an a Aboriginal sort of group or organisation that offer... Pretty much, you, you you pretty much got your clothes on your back, and they'll take you out for three or four days into the wilderness, and pretty much show you how they live, yeah. how to get your own food, how to sleep, um, and pretty much take you back to like sort That's of awesome. primitive, the sort of primitive uh, ways, I guess. Bush and Tucker styles uh, and shit. Yeah, give yeah. A really, really a good understanding and idea. Well, what if it is any like. if anybody would know how to survive in the Australian fucking geo- geography, it'd be the indigenous man. Yeah. They've been here like they're actually. You know, the current dating is like 40,000 years or yeah, something 40, like that. 000. But there's actually new theories to um, to the point that the from Africa theory may actually be f- like from Australia or the, or the landmass that, you know, Australia was really? joined with other stuff like as the original peoples, you know, the original homo sapiens and shit. Really? Wow. Yeah. So it didn't all yeah. start in Ethiopia? No, well, there's there's new new theories about like from Africa is now potentially like they're talking like hundred hundreds of yeah. thousands of years for so started in Ethiopia. Indigenous is that, is Australians. Ark, Ark of the Covenant is is like um is Adam uh, and Eve. Yeah, it's like well, I, I, I don't know it uh, in, in depth <laughs> enough to really talk about it in any sort of in, with any sort of intellect. Graham Hancock, right? Mm, yeah, the, uh, he he wrote a book uh, that um, fingerprint of the gods, which is based around that Ark of the Covenant. Like, oh, right. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, which is just uh, effectively, as I understand it, a, a place in Ethiopia where you know the humanity, first sign yeah, of life, sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, exactly, where Trippy. people came down from the trees and and started to stand upright and and all that sort of stuff. Have but you ever heard the theory about uh, the the stoned ape theory, where they say that um, human consciousness changed once primates started eating? Psychedelic mushrooms. mushrooms. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Far yeah. out. Could be, yeah, I don't know. Like, who am I to say that it's wrong? It oh, seems to be drawing like a long <laughs> bow, man, and these chimps getting around yeah. off head. Like, yeah. I, I'm definitely oh, yeah. not somebody and, who and should be speaking on, like, no, <laughs> yeah, neural is. biology. Okay. Or yeah. <laughs> and no, nobody well, in my, is. In my educated opinion. Yeah. Yeah. The psilocybin <laughs> manipulated their cerebral cortex. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but even, <sighs> even, even the dudes like your, your Graham Hancocks and, and, and stuff like that, they wouldn't know. You know, no, they're just it's, guessing. It's all, yeah, like it's they're all... Just they're, just ro- they're writers as well. Yeah, they're, they're their, just making an educated it. guess at it. It's all speculation, isn't it? Mm. But, yeah, it's it's crazy, it's man. There's so many different different theories, but, uh, yeah, you, you like... You, a lot of them sort of err on the side of rationality more than others, and you'd have to, have to think that, mm. you know, the Adam and Eve story and... Flat Earth and all that sort of shit is obviously doesn't doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah. What do you mean, man? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Man? Doesn't make sense. Eli flat Earth. is a firm believer in the flat Earth. <laughs> <laughs> you flat Earth? These are all wrong. The the, the sun's flat. <laughs> yeah, oh. exactly. You heard that one? There's, there's a new one. The sun's flat, man. The right. sun's flat. It right. Looks flat. So to explain me. that to us. Oh man, I was just saw a diagram of it basically, and it was like one of those uh, links that you see in Facebook. And um, mate, it was the the this, obviously the sun is at the bottom, um, like a big CD, like a big CD, but just with no <laughs> hole in the middle, and then the planets above it, supposedly. Yeah. Oh, that was another yeah. theory. Yeah, yeah. And who? And what about simulation theory? 
I fucking I had this moment coming home on the train the other day where I swear to God it was like Truman Show spec at the train station. Like there was a glitch in the system and everything everything fucked up and there was just this moment where it seemed like everybody were actors all of a sudden. And then like and then the train like came and then everything resumed resumed as normal. <laughs> yeah. Are you all right? I had had a, <laughs> I had had a little spliff before that. <laughs> 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 uh, I felt yeah. like fuck, man. This this simulation theory could be uh, could be legit. Yeah. You know? But we see, could that, be virtual reality li- mm. living inside a game that we're not aware mm. of. But yeah. but that in itself is, I think, the the really interesting thing about not only I suppose the human psychology, but but definitely drugs in general and what they do to human psychology because you know like you can quite literally you know finish smoking something or finish taking something or whatever and and once that period of time kicks where where you know like it obviously your bloodstream takes it up you are in a different spot you know like you're mentally totally somewhere else or you're mentally thinking about things that you would have other otherwise never you know considered and and just different things are going on you know yeah, like, i mean yeah. it's it's, it's quite profound it's awesome, how much it affects people and and to think like the way that it interacts you know the fact that you can take something like the ancient peruvians or whatever have uh extremely hallucinogenic drug called ayahuasca which is actually like in the amazon jungle the root i think somebody fact check this but i think the the root of one plant mixed with like the leaves or the berries of another of a possible like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of different plant species but it just happens to be you know the chemical reaction that happens with Mm. these two plants when ingested and processed by the stomach leads to this like 20 hour body purging like intense psychedelic experience that's actually meant to break shit like heroin addiction and stuff like that it's so profound like people will go like back di- into their deepest darkest like repressed memories and stuff like that um there was a story on a recent joe rogan podcast where just, this just out of interest is it you, is like a bad trip yeah you tripping the whole time or like no well the... they, they say it's very like therapeutic for people because okay. they you know this one guy for example didn't even remember like you know you, they say you, your earliest memories are probably from like age three or something like that you don't really remember anything prior to that but this guy had um it was actually dmt which is like a shortened synthesized version of um the ayahuasca experience but you know from all reports a similar hallucinate hallucinogenic uh experience but um this guy was like went into the trip and was frantically like f- flailing around on the ground holding his neck like like he was choking to death basically and just everybody else in the room was super worried about him obviously and they they actually ended up filming him it was dorian yates Mm. on that recent joe rogan podcast Mm. but um and they were all you know pretty worried about him but having done the drug before knew that he would he would come good in time to just wait like somebody having a seizure basically and uh and then turns out that he had actually like repressed this memory from birth of him being strangled by the umbilical cord wow. and he had no idea up until that point in his life but he, he he smoked this dmt and he relived the experience like as if he was going through it but the fact that he had you know gone into that memory and addressed it and felt those emotions around it <laughs> 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 Boom. I Boom. think uh, I think Love. we've won here. Oh man, it's won about five hundred. <laughs> oh, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, sorry, that's, that's um, awesome. That's the horse at yeah. the valley. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. She will rain, mate. <laughs> oh right, she I've heard rain. of that. One of the one the golden right. slippers first yeah. up just tonight. So sensational. Oh, beautiful. Awesome. Four dollar fifty odds. Four fifty and a slipper winner on a Friday night. Fucking yeah. hell. My mate's calling me. I gave him the tip. He's oh, calling me to thank me. That's fine to take that. Holy shit. that's awesome. But yeah, especially especially that that drug more than any, I suppose, is you know obviously I have no experience with it whatsoever. But from all by all intensive purposes, that, that you know the people that have taken it talk about that it's on a whole nother level also mm. to get altogether. You know, it stands in a league of its own. Yeah, I think there's a, there's potential for it to um, you know not not agree with somebody as well, but uh, you know it, it's. It could, it could be touch and go. It could be a really therapeutic experience for somebody. Get them off, you know, nicotine or heroin or whatever it may be. But um, it could also fucking, you know, we we've known of some people that have have done DMT and and never quite been the same afterwards. You know, like mm. there's a 
there's a potential there for if you've got some sort of predisposition predisposition to a mental condition mm. like that shit can be really dangerous and i think that's mm. like you know responsible information you know like Precise. dmt the spirit molecule is a documentary that's like basically glorifies it but um you know it's fucking slippery slope with that shit because somebody somebody's making it it's the same with the ayahuasca you know it's like you're paying for these air quotes like shamans or whatever mm. and it could just be some dodgy folk Drugging you up and stealing your shit, you know that exists yeah. as well. So. I think. I think. Uh, I don't know. For me, everything comes down to the research that you put into it, and the, and the you know the the pre effort that goes into it. I mean, you, you safeguard against yourself against risk by by minimising that by doing research. You know, so I think if, if obviously you've got a guy recommended to you that you know that you know through somebody else who's done it and all that sort of stuff, then you know your chances are fairly good of of, of getting a decent decent play at it. Brad, have you ever had um, an idiot in a pub or something like, or even in the street that has just sort of been a dickhead and tried to start a fight with you and you've just, you can just, being a martial artist yourself, can just sort of talk your way out of it knowing that you could absolutely really badly hurt this person if uh, if push came to shove? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All like, yeah a lot of times, yeah. Um, and yeah, just like normally words will get you out of it, sometimes they don't. Yeah. Um, then they get an inside Just dickheads. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not, yeah. Pe- people are just stupid these days. Like, everyone's got an agenda. Everyone's, you know... Add like, alcohol into the mix yeah, and ego. Geez, and you just oh, have fun. God. Yeah. And it's so cool that you have that mindset on it too. Because even though you, you can... Whip, and I suppose it probably gives you that mindset. Knowing that you can whip their ass so you, you choose not to. Yeah. And just drama. and Like, the, the drama of fighting someone... Also, and like you know, like you train and fight every day. Last thing you want to do is fight some clown on the street. <laughs> mm, yeah, you know, like go home, man. Seriously. Yeah, we were only telling a story before the podcast. Um, me and me and Ma- Maddie were uh, were going out to the car, and we got approached by like a, a fourteen year old on the street who pretty much like uh, wanted, wanted wanted to fight us. Like just sort of like came up and started you know shaping up straight away and. Like pulled his shirt up as if he was reaching for a handgun in his in his in his pants yeah. and it was shout out the Village Green Studios yeah, yeah with his ten year old accomplice <laughs> with with, alongside him in his Oakland Raiders hoodie and then like. kick kick the, kick the car as we drove off like we we were actually sort of talking about that you know in the, in the sense that look it probably would have been a, a positive outcome to to whoop that guy's ass simply for the lesson that you would probably teach him about mm. you know being. Running Res- respectful, mouth. running your mouth exactly like around people, but but at the same time, there's so many different things that could have gone wrong with the situation mm. in terms of you know even though obviously you can you know definitely whoop whoop people's ass. I'm not about to whoop some no, year old. No, no, exactly. But <laughs> might you, hit him with that, the car. That that, that, person, <laughs> that person might take that ass whooping as a real shot to their ego, and then they pull a knife out or they go and get. Six of their mates, or you know, anything that sort of just escalates the situation, and that's how you know the unscripted sort of combat just often mm. goes, which is just the. I was, the I was going to get out of the car and just wheel kick, like <laughs> 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 I don't have any wheel kicks in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Do a hammy straight yeah, up, yeah, oh, <laughs> flying arm bar. Yeah. It was a good thing he was ten because I wouldn't be able to get my leg up any higher than my hips. <laughs> 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 Oh, that groin flexibility, yeah, eh? What it yeah, used yeah. to do. Oh. Show him how those hands feel, but oh. <laughs> <laughs> what hands? Uh, we, we were joking. Like, we, we were throwing out the possibility that he might have just been a uh, a fourteen or a fifteen year old Floyd Mayweather and just <laughs> lit us both up like <laughs> <laughs> slumped over bang. in the street, yeah. just like where are these boys? Oh, we were shit. podcasting yeah. at seven thirty. What's that? <laughs> ring? Yeah, what's that ringing in my ears? And why am I looking up at the sky? Uh, <laughs> we live to fight another day. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we do. And we uh, live to fight another episode. It's been fucking awesome to have you along, Brad. Really appreciate you and, and Eli, of course, uh, taking the time to fucking sit down and chat with us. It's been fucking been real. Absolutely, man. We're Congrat- fi- finished on a win. Congratulations <laughs> on, on, on yeah. your win, man. That, that, that's a good result. That was bad. So that, that just goes straight back to sports bet, obviously. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fight, fight tomorrow, I'll be gone. Yeah. <laughs> off, off to the rippers. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out, nose beers. All right. Uh, sick boys. Well, thanks again. Thanks for having us on, man. This is awesome. Yeah, yeah. No, thank you very much. No Good worries. And then j- just quickly before we, before we wrap it, like if uh, if people obviously want to want to do some training with you or whatever, wh- how can they how can they get in touch with you? Um, 
0411 675 203. Brad Trainer. Or look him up on Facebook as well. You can look me up on Facebook. You heard it there, (laughs) Ferg. Fantastic, man. Trainer by name, trainer by occupation. Works well. (laughs) <laughs> spelt, spelt different bar Spelt different <laughs> and, uh, and Eli Do you need any more Clients Or are you already Busy enough uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fine Thanks bro Because <laughs> <laughs> we'll get You thousands right here bro. <laughs> <laughs> All straight tens. That DM will be Fucking blowing up After this <laughs> Alright boys Thanks again Thank you Thank you Peace